In case you missed any previous episodes, we have prepared something for you just so that you don't miss anything. Don't worry if you haven't seen us at the regular time, we have a recap for you so you can take benefits from all the topics that we have been talking about. So stay tuned. Last time, we talked about the relationship between siblings, and today we're going to talk about relationship between a husband and wife in the marriage setting, because that relationship will make or break the family. It is really important. I hope you will learn from this and apply the learning that you saw in this, uh, that you will see in this episode. problem that they face a lot is okay I expect things to be smooth right now when a person enters marriage you shouldn't come in with oh this is going to be a disaster this is going to be a problem this Negative. might end, end badly we don't do that mm. but we also don't do the opposite which is everything's going to be great mm. everything's going to work out so two extremes two extremes yeah. exactly and well like I said we need to work on it marriage is work and when people hear this they feel negative about it how do you yeah. feel if i tell you marriage is yeah. work because you don't work you don't want to work especially men i i believe yes. men in general once they got met once they get married they feel oh now it's just to they shut down and they want to relax they go on <laughs> autopilot yes 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 but then the, the work starts here the work starts absolutely because if you take a look at, for example, a plant, right? Yeah. When you plant a tree or when you plant something, it takes root. Right. 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 Now, you could say if it's a house plant, mm -hmm. right? You can say it will take care of itself. It's nature. What will happen to it? it might die. It will die mm -hmm. if you don't water it, if you don't check the location, yeah. if it gets enough sunlight or not. Right. You don't put in the work, it's going to die. The nutrition and everything. Yeah. Same thing with a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So with that said, how do you work on it in a way where both of you can enjoy this marriage? See, I see, I see some sort of uh, differences that will happen immediately mm. with maybe the first child mm -hmm. or the second child or the children in general, where they, for example, my spouse want them to be free and dynamic and Western-like and stuff. And I want them to be, you know, disciplined and, you know, uh, traditional and so on. Immediately here we have a problem, right? Yeah. So we need to sit together before even we think of having children. And what we want our children to be, and we agree on a vision or, or, uh, or some sort of scenario, that we all work on it together as yeah. a team to get them to where we want them to be rather than... Yeah. Uh, but before you can go into that yeah. conversation about yeah. how you want to be as parents, yeah. you need to really decide and agree with each other what you want to be as a spouse, as a relationship, yeah. in your relationship. Because it makes or break how you're going to be as a parent, honestly. Absolutely. So, so what do you do? You set values, boundaries, what? Understanding each other's values is a good start, yeah. right? And obviously this should be done way before, but for some couples, okay, maybe yeah. they missed it. All right. It's not too late. It's never too late. It's anytime, even anytime. now, after 10 years, after 20 years. Seriously, people can't can change. So it's okay. Have yeah. a sit down with one another. Be open to communicate about this and say, hey, what are your values? What, what, what do you want out of life? What is important yeah. to you? And then we share what's important to us. 
and you kind of take a look at, okay, how do we fit this into our lives? How do we work on this? Oh, okay, you feel, let's say, for example, you might feel you need a little bit more from your spouse, mm. whether it's from the wife or the husband. Right. How do you communicate that? Yeah, for example, I would tell my wife, uh, if I am with my friends, don't call me and ask me where you are. Hmm. And she would tell me, okay, before you leave, tell me where you are. I will not ask you exactly. to where you are. So we, we have that dialogue exactly. and communicate. Through like a method to check yes. in with one another yes. that works for both. Right, right. I mean, one of my coaches, honestly, I loved the advice mm. he gave and it was so valuable. Mm. He says, if you want to set something and you don't want to be bothered yeah. by the other person, yeah. Mm. Make sure it's fair for both of you. Yes, exactly. Not just for you. Yeah. So, for example, you said, I don't want to be disturbed when yes. I'm with my friends. Yes. It's fair for you, but is it fair for her? Yeah. And I didn't tell her even. They say if you want to live a generally peaceful and positive life, you need to practice gratitude. Gratitude is more than just saying thank you. So let's take a look throughout this episode. How can you practice gratitude and live a better life? The weather these days is beautiful, isn't it? It's been beautiful, yeah. Yeah, and it, it reflects on people as well. People are smiling more on the street. Are they? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I mean... Really, I mean... That's a big stretch. <laughs> <laughs> really, I, well. mean, I feel like also people are becoming more... T I'm, I'm feeling like mm. that as well. Like the weather is making you feel a little bit more tired, worn down. Like you want to just be cozy and warm. Yeah, yeah. Because... because uh, because, because the weather is, is 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 really nice. I mean, why 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 want? You know, if it's cold, then I would say people want to go cozy. Perhaps, perhaps. But the sunny and people want it's to go not out. Warm enough, you know, like that that whole atmosphere of whatever it is that you're dealing with that day. It just feels it's nicer to just yeah. chill at home. <laughs> away from the traffic, <laughs> away from the grumpy crowds. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think uh, with uh, people, you know, to, to, to not to be grumpy? How, how they cannot be grumpy? I mean, what, what are the tools that we have? Easier said than done, right? Yeah. As usual. Yeah. But when it comes to like when I was just we were talking about yeah. weather. Yeah. Like you had a good perspective towards right. it, and I could see some other perspective yeah. towards it. True. But it goes back to the core where we're thinking, okay, this is the reality of the situation. Can you still find something positive in it? Mm. Can you still find something to be grateful for? I'm sure there's always something to be grateful. Always. But we don't dig in. No, we don't. And this is the practice of gratitude that we need to be looking at. Absolutely. It's just such an interesting concept when you think gratitude, right? It, we don't think of it as a practice. Mm. We think just be grateful yeah. or say thank you. But what are we really being grateful about? It goes deeper than that. It's a system. In what way? It's meaning, you know, you have to, to, to really delib deliberately look at the good things in your life.
Yeah, I mean, you know, as a system, mm. uh, one have to look really deep and, and, and to think about uh, their day, for example, or about, about their life. Uh, and, and, and doing it on a daily basis. It's not like you do it once and no. I, I, I would prefer as well, I would do it early in the morning when I wake up and before I go to sleep. So it's, it's like you're saying to develop it as a habit. Absolutely. So then how would we practice that on a daily basis? So, you know, like a lot of people practice it, I would say differently. All right. Uh, like even in our religion, for example, right. when we're supposed to have gratitude and gratefulness. Yes. So they, and there's that quote that we're supposed to remember from the Quran, you know, yes. the more that you are grateful, the more you are, you get to receive or the Absolutely. more you can be given. Absolutely. So people think I should only be get grateful and thankful when something good happens. Yeah. And then there, but yeah. Okay. Should it really just only be when only something good happens or you know, we should go deeper than that. Yeah, I agree, Rob. Uh, see, the, the, the fact that every single second, we have something good going on. Like, if you think you're breathing, exactly. you are in good health. As simple as that. Yes. Waking up and saying, I woke up today. Yeah, because many people don't wake up. Exactly. I the, mean, yeah. Tomorrow is not promised. Right. Absolutely. And this concept of being grateful for the little things, this is the practice that we need to get used to it. Because some people feel, I don't have much to be thankful for because they're not thinking of the simple stuff. Right. They're not, they take it for granted. Mm. For example, when you get sick, you take for granted that you used to be able to breathe yeah, easier healthy, without the nose yeah, exactly. and the sore throat. Mm. And so you start to miss the days where you could breathe normally when you want to sleep. But why do we wait to feel grateful yeah. for that? Yeah, some people they travel, you know, some, uh, for example, uh, poor destination and stuff, and they only then they see their life. Exactly. That it's, it's they should be grateful for their life, uh, and and yeah, this is what we're missing, and and this is something that, as you said, it's it should be ingrained in us because yes. it's our religion, uh, and. Uh, to be grateful for the Creator, for God, uh, for all the things that we have. I was really shocked and surprised to see that from the Far East to the farthest West, everybody, every religion, every culture, they have some sort of fasting. Fasting is really healthy. Fasting is giving your body and the body organs some time to adjust and to reboot itself. Fasting is a good way for your good cells to eat up the bad cells. This is what fasting is good for. Fasting. Is fasting good? For the soul? Yeah. It is, right? Yeah. And I think scientifically as well, people have started to engage in the concept of it being healthy as well. How could it be healthy? Because we always known that, you know, when you eat, you build your body. When you eat, you take uh, energy and stuff. And fasting is all about not eating. So how can we be healthy when we fast? So I think it's that window, right? Mm -hmm. Between when you, st you break your fast, when it becomes Maghrib, and up until daylight, when you're supposed to stop. What you eat in that window, that's what matters. That's what adds to your health. Okay. But unfortunately, what do we practice in our community, you know? 
um, the minute that <laughs> we have the rabrias, yeah. we have the dinners, we have the excessive, excessive, you know, like the table is completely full right. with the food. Mm. You have your sweets that are dipped in pure sugar and syrup. <laughs> and I feel like that is part of the thing that makes you break down a little bit. Mm. Mm -hmm. that, that amount of sugar, sugar as it is yeah. already affected, well, yeah. it you, yeah. it exhausts you. Sugar but in Ramadan is the best. It's the best. It <laughs> tastes amazing. I'm not going to say anything about that. But yeah. if you're thinking health-wise, mm. right? And the concept of the fasting, if you think about, for example, now they call it intermittent fasting. Right. They are teaching people how to do this. It doesn't work for everyone. But what does it do for people, for example, who have insulin resistance? It helps them restart their system a little bit, but then like obviously, resetting. yeah, it's like resetting your system, especially if you're constantly filling up all the time. I feel, you know, I, I feel we're blessed and we should feel, you know, grateful for that one month of the year that we fast. Yeah. And in the, in the old days, when I was younger, I used to think, why are we fasting and why are we, you know, starving and making our... Now that I, I, you know, I, I have more knowledge and I read about fasting and how it is good for the body and for the soul, as you said, uh, I started wanted to fast. You know, there sometimes you know there are certain days that you know they they encourage us to fast, and I would want to fast because of the interim fasting and the, stud the latest studies about fasting because you 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 put yourself without food as if you're giving a break for your organs and for your entire system This concept of you, what you were mentioning, the fact that we didn't understand it much as kids. Yeah. But I think it's so important when you're introducing it to children, how you introduce it. It kind of gives them that connection to it. I like that. But a lot of times, I think a lot of families, you know, they say like, you have to. Yeah. Okay, yes, we do. But mm. how do you introduce it to them in a way that it becomes a beautiful method of them connecting to their religion yeah. as opposed to force yeah. or out of you know fear yeah uh, maybe even in school they used to say you know we we have you have to fast because you want to feel the poor uh, right. who are who don't have food so you start so you feel that and as if it's only that that's the only Simple, angle for yeah. exactly, but it's so much more than that. It's a lot. So, okay, telling the them discipline, why, the... why do you need to feel the poor? Yeah. Why do you need to feel that? It's the patience required, right? That patience before you get to eat. Right. The fact that you still have to get up and do your responsibilities while you're on an empty fasting. stomach. Yeah. Um, Some people they... cannot do that. No, they can't. They're always like they're drowning face. They're grumpy, grumpy angry. Uh, angry because they say I'm fasting. Yeah. And 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 I think in the in the workplace, some people they are, you know, some maybe senior manager. Their their people don't go to them because they are fasting. Yeah. They wait for them for the decision until after Eid, this which is, is sad, really. It's sad because then that kind of goes against the purpose of mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And I know it's not easy. It's definitely not easy, especially for the smokers or the people who are coffee. very used to have coffee in the yeah, morning. Yeah. Um, this is now a complete opposite of their habit. I feel in, it is only, you know, the only two, three days into it. And then that's my own experience. Then we get used to it. It's like, you know. You want to continue for the, the rest of the year yeah. because you know it's 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 you get used to it. Uh, the first day maybe it will be difficult, the sleeping pattern and stuff, and then once you get into it, it goes. It's it's like anything else, I believe. It's true. 
any any challenge that we feel sometimes oh this is difficult but once we take the first step we see oh it's happening yeah